JCPS will reopen schools later this month and immediately try to address the damage done in all digital learning. A recent WDRB investigation revealed a dramatic rise in failing grades. And in today's follow up, we examine participation online. Who's not clicked in as much and why? I'm going to write the title of a book down. Rebecca Heil turned her dining room into a classroom. And we've touched on similes and metaphors. To feed the need for knowledge in a pandemic. Tell me what you've done there on your problem. I want to see how to make sure I'm reading it right. For her fourth graders from Bick Elementary. I have students that I am teaching online who are holding two-year-olds in their lap because they're babysitting, because their parents have to work. But it's the lessons on the other side of the screen. Let me be clear. Mm -hmm. You teach 10 year olds. Yes. That the students are teaching her. Where the stories are shocking when you hear about the student that is pulling into the McDonald's parking lot just to get Wi Fi to complete an assignment. But I had, that was my student last year. I mean, I had a student like that. She told me the next day she got a milkshake out of it. That stick to her bones. Yeah, there, there's times where, yeah, you, you, you log off and you just sit in silence. It's just a constant reminder of the impact that the pandemic has had and continues to have on our most vulnerable families. One of those vulnerabilities is poverty, whether it's the digital divide, home structural support, or financial resources for tutoring, the pandemic exploited gaps in education. But we also have to be very honest about, you know, we do have have kids that that haven't been with us like we want them to be. This wall looks like a maze of numbers, but behind each number is a student really is a story. WDRB analyzed participation rates in digital learning for all 163 schools and education programs in JCPS. That's what you're seeing here. And we found that schools with 60% or less of its students receiving free or reduced lunch were above the district's 90% average participation rate. Look, 95%. That free lunch is a tell because it's based on household income. Watch how the graph shifts when we have a higher free lunch population, say 80%, meaning schools with lower income families. Participation drops 11 percentage points, now short of the district's 90% average, and some schools fell way short. Getting the kids to log into class, that is the challenge. Um, Uh. Tyra Walker teaches special education at Roosevelt Perry Elementary School, where the participation rate hovers around 60%. You have parents that are working, going from one job to another to make ends meet, wanting their child to be independent and hoping that they can maintain. Across the board, JCPS has seen a sharp rise in failing grades with students all online. 60,000 Fs from elementary to middle and high school. A 138% increase in a time period we examined during an investigation last December. This is a crisis in education. I believe that. Walker sees the struggle as both a teacher and a parent. My son's in the 11th grade this year and I mean he started out and it was rough. She says poverty is not the only problem in online participation. He had about 16 missing assignments. Her home's financially stable, but she says her honor student, like many, became disconnected from the rigor of daily school while sitting at home. I just so happen to be a teacher where I can be here with my kids to hold them accountable to make sure they're doing what they are supposed to do. Everybody does not have that privilege. It's making what was already an achievement gap even bigger. JCPS confirms black and brown students, along with kids from poor homes and students with special needs, are falling further behind the rest of the pack. The district now working on a mass catch-up plan, expecting 20 to 40,000 kids in summer school, saying it could take three to five years to repair the damage. And what is the most important thing that parents, students, people in the public need to know about the pathway forward. We are working on a good, sound, research-based plan um, to, to make sure that we continue moving students forward while filling in what needs to be done along the way. 
Until then, at BIC... We're doing anything we can to keep them engaged. I mean, if my student says, I can't get on till 4, and I know that I need to touch base with them on a concept, then we're on line at 4 o'clock. This high poverty school celebrates its near 90% participation with school online, meeting students wherever and however they need. You know, we've had teachers drop things off and, and do lessons through the front door. Heil believes that's the pathway forward throughout JCPS. Because I'm not going to set them up to fail. She's only lost connection with one child in the pandemic. It's become all hands on deck and we haven't let up. And it, it we haven't been able to. Because if you do, someone slips through. You know, and that's the last thing that we want. Continue this story online with WDRB.com education reporter Kevin Wheatley. You can see participation rates broken down by school and subgroups for your child's school. That's now on WDRB.com.